welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Challenge of the Yukon. Original air date is February 8th, 1950, and the title is The Runaway Air. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat... And Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, one two Huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Yes, hear how you can get cut-out models to build Sergeant Preston's famous Yukon Trail in your home. Golly, 59 models, no extra cost. It's the most thrilling offer ever made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the swell-tasting cereals shot from guns. No waiting, either. Listen for full details in just a few minutes. A howling blizzard shrieked and stung his face with swirling blasts of snow as Bat Nelson urged his team forward through the night. Don't quit on me, you mutts, or I'll beat the hides off you. Get along there, push! Push, you us! Suddenly, the ghostly outline of a shack loomed up through the snow-filled darkness. As Bat came closer, he saw that the cabin had a ramshackle, deserted appearance. He halted his team. Hold there, hold. Taking a hurricane lantern from one gear on his sled, he walked up to the shack and tried the door. As he stepped through the doorway, he was greeted by a sudden series of barks from inside the cabin. Bat's hand streaked toward his six-shooter when a voice cried out. Start shoot, please. In the darkness, it was impossible to see who had spoken. You don't want me to start shooting. Come over here to the doorway. Don't try any funny stuff. All right. Lucky, stop it. Don't mind him, mister. He's just a little dog. He'll soon be a dead dog if he doesn't stop that yabbing. Yeah, light this lantern. I'll give you a match. A moment later, the flaring rays of the lantern revealed the frightened face of a trembling parka-clad boy. At his feet stood a little black and white dog. And I'll be a... What's your name, kid? Chris Farrell. How come you're hiding here in this old shade? Oh, I'm not hiding. I... I just stopped here on account of the blizzard. I didn't see any team outside. I was traveling on foot. Where'd you come from? Hudson Creek. It's a long way from here. What are you doing? Running away from home or something? Uh, sort of. What do you mean, sort of? Well, I'm running away, but but it's not really running away from home. My mother and father are dead. I was living with a guardian. Yeah. Yukon's a mighty cold place to get lost in, sonny. Didn't you have any idea where you were heading? Well, there's an Indian living in Whitehorse who, who used to work for my father. I thought if I could find him, maybe he could help me. And what if you can't find him? Then I thought maybe I could go down to Skagway and get a job on a ship going back to the States. I got an uncle down in Seattle. Well, that's all. <laughs> you know, young fella, I've got an idea we can help each other out. What do you mean? Well, when it comes right down to it, you and me are in the same boat. You see, uh, I'm running away, too. Why? Yeah. Like this. Uh, certain no good pole cat shot a man up in Selkirk and threw the blame on me. So now the muddies are looking for me. Well, if you didn't do it, why didn't you go to the police and tell them you're innocent? Oh, I can't do that. They'd never believe me. You see, first I've got to get a hold of a man who really did it and make him confess... Then I'll go to the police. Do you know where to find the man who did it? Yeah. He, uh, 
Like the Skagway. That's where I'm heading. Gee, if I can't find my Indian friend, would you take me along with you? Uh, sure I would. I've got a team. You can ride the sled. See, that's what I meant when I said we could help each other, huh? But how can I help you? Well, I'll tell you. I'm uh, all out of grub. We'll need four or five days' supplies for the trip down the Skagway. I uh, can't show my face in public for fear the money's on that, me. But I thought if I give you the money, you'd go into town and buy up what we need, you see? Oh, golly, I'd be glad to. I may have starved. Oh, by the way, mister, what's your name? Uh, I, uh, Smith. Uh, Bill Smith. Uh, you know how to handle a team? Oh, sure I do. All right, then. You can uh, drive in the White Horse tomorrow morning as soon as the blizzard stops. In the meantime, let's see if we can build a fire over here in the stove. The following morning, two men sat talking in a hotel room in White Horse. I tell you, Guthrie, we're making a mistake going to the Marty's. Once they start snooping around, there's no telling what they'll turn up. Maybe so, but we have no choice. Sooner or later, they'll find out the boy is missing, and if I haven't reported his disappearance, they're apt to think I murdered him. I might be a right at that. Of course I'm right. <sighs> Come on. Get your parka. We'll go talk to the Marty's right now. Sergeant Preston was seated in his cabin writing a report on the capture and escape of the outlaw, Bat Nelson. Yukon King lay at his master's feet. The great dog raised his head and growled as someone knocked at the door. Steady, King. Come in. Uh, you're in charge of the uh, police detachment here at Whitehorse? That's right. I'm Sergeant Preston. Well, Guthrie is my name, Leonard Guthrie. I'm a lawyer. My friend here is Mr. Frank Metz. Glad to know you. Glad to know you, sir. Got to sit down? Uh, thank Thanks. you. Sergeant, I've come to report the disappearance of my ward. He's a 12-year-old boy named Christopher Farrell. He ran away two days ago. Two days ago? You're rather late reporting his disappearance, aren't you? Well, I just got into town last night. This is the first opportunity I've had. You see, uh, Metz and I have been searching for him ourselves. Where do you live? On Hudson Creek, the uh, site of the Farrell mine. What about the boy's parents? Are they dead? Yes, his mother died several years ago, and his father died last spring. The will appointed me legal guardian. Did the boy inherit the mine? Yes. But, of course, I'm acting as trustee until the boy comes of age. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, Mr. Metz here is uh, foreman of the mine. I see. What made the boy run away? Frankly, I can't imagine. I've treated Chris like my own son. Showered him with affection, in fact. Of course, he... Uh, he may have been upset because I threatened to get rid of Bucky. That's his little dog. Is that what you call showering him with affection? Well, hang it all, Sergeant. The dog didn't like me. He yapped at me constantly. Any idea where the boy was heading when he ran away? Yes. I found out he stopped overnight at a trapper's cabin about ten miles from the mine. He told the trapper he was on his way to Whitehorse, so he may be right here in town. Unless, of course, he got lost. What does he look like? Well, he, uh... He has light blonde hair and blue eyes, and uh, there's a mole on his left cheek. He was wearing a black bearskin parka. I see. Tell me, Sergeant, do you think you'll be able to find him? We'll do our best. I'll inquire around town, and if no one's seen him, we'll get out search parties. Yes, do that by all means. And let me know as soon as you learn anything. Metz and I are staying at the Yukon Hotel. An hour later, after a number of fruitless inquiries, Sergeant Preston walked into Asa Jevons' general store. He was greeted by the jovial proprietor. Well, if it isn't Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Asa. <laughs> by golly, King, I know what you're after. It's a special hunk of caribou meat I've been saving for you. <laughs> he knows you're a soft touch, Asa. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Say thanks, King. <laughs> well, now you're downright welcome. So eat hearty. <laughs> Say, uh, I hear Bat Nelson broke jail last night. Yes, he did. Have you picked up his trail yet? Yes, we picked it up last night soon after the jailbreak. The three men who helped him escape are already accounted for, but... Nelson got away in the blizzard. The snow covered up his tracks and dispersed the scent. Well, too bad. The reason I stopped in was to ask if you've seen or heard anything of a missing boy named Chris Farrell. Twelve years old, blonde, blue eyes, mole on his left cheek, ah. wears a black parka. By Juniper, I certainly have seen him. Uh -huh. He was in here this morning buying supplies. Had a little dog with him. Did he tell you where he was staying? No, but he said he was trying to find an Indian named Charlie Bearspaw. There was an Indian by that name working as cook over at Sam Galloway's Cafe. Yeah, that's what I told him. The kid was tickled pink. 
It sounded as though he was going right over to the cafe as soon as he left the store. Thanks, Asa. With what you've told me, it shouldn't be hard to find him. Come along. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chris Farrell had already found his Indian friend, Charlie Bearspaw. Charlie, who had served Chris's family for years, was overjoyed to see the boy again and agreed to accompany him back to the cabin. Half an hour after leaving town, they arrived at their destination. <laughs> Inside, Charlie. I'll introduce you to my friend. Come on, Bucky. As Chris and the Indian entered the cabin, Bat's face darkened with suspicion and his gun flashed out of his holster. Don't shoot. This is my friend. Uh, your friend? Oh, sure. This is your religion, pal, that you were telling me about, huh? <laughs> For a minute there, you had me worrying. I'll put my gun away. Uh, his name is Charlie Bearspaw. Charlie Bearspaw, huh? <laughs> That means your names are sure funny. Charlie, this is Bill Smith. Oh. Uh, did you uh, get them supplies you went after? Yeah, they're out in the sled. Uh, Me go outside. Get food off sled. Cook something to eat right now. Yeah, that's a good idea. Charlie was working as a cook at Sam Galloway's cafe. He used to cook for us at home, too. Well, I can stand some good home cooking right now. A moment later, Charlie re-entered the cabin... But instead of food, he was carrying a loaded revolver. You put him up. Hey. What's your idea? Charlie, don't point that gun at Bill. He's our friend. Him no friend. Me see him picture on handbill. Him outlaw. Name Bat Nelson. What? Uh, you're pretty smart, Indian. But not quite smart enough. <laughs> With a sudden movement, Bat grabbed Chris and used him as a shield. At the same time, he fired from the hip. Oh. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Exciting. Yes, fellas and girls, you can now get cutout models to build Sergeant Preston's famous Yukon Trail. And you don't pay extra for them. They're yours, 59 exciting models offered by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The swell-tasting king-size cereals shot from guns. Golly, with these Yukon Trail models, we can see just where Sergeant Preston and King are traveling. Yes, you can start immediately to follow these stories of Sergeant Preston and King on the Yukon Trail as they pursue the deadly, dangerous Bat Nelson. Look, you get a model of Asa Jebbins General Store where Chris bought supplies today for Bat Nelson. And a swell model of the Galloway Eating House where Charlie Bear's Paw is a cook. Gee, these models are super. You bet. They're different. They're bigger. And they're easier to put together. Look, you even get scenery. Mountains, forests, creeks, and waterfalls. You get dog sleds and dog teams. You can hitch up and move around. You can reach right into Asa Jebbins' store and move the shelves of supplies. And it's easy to get these Yukon Trail models. Yes, every single model comes on special new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Say... Wheat and rice shot from guns is my favorite cereal. That's great. And what do you like best about them? They're nice and crispy. And they taste so good. Well, remember, as soon as you get the big red and blue packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, you can start to build your Yukon Trail. There are eight different packages in all, with the numbers clearly printed on the front. And they're now at your grocer's. Models of Asa Jevons General Store, Galloway Eating House, and the White Horse Jail on packages number one and two. Plus, a Gold Prospector's York Boat, two reindeer, dog sled, dog team, and others. Then, packages number three to eight have Yukon Trail models of buildings and places you'll hear about Friday and in stories to come. Remember, there's no waiting. Simply go to your grocer. He now has Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice with the Yukon Trail models right on the packages. Hurry, they're waiting for you. Now to continue. When Sergeant Preston inquired about Chris at the cafe, Sam Galloway, the owner, told him how a boy answering Chris Farrell's description had come to the restaurant looking for Charlie Bearsball. 
I told him Charlie was working out in the kitchen. By thunder, when I took him back there, he and Charlie liked to bust out crying. They were so glad to see each other. Did they explain how they happened to know each other? Yeah. Seems Charlie used to work for the boy's father. Oh. Guess he was just like one of the family. Did they say where they were going when they left here? Well, they were going to some cabin outside of town where the boy was staying. That's all I know. Sam, does Charlie live here on the premises? Yeah. Yeah, let him sleep up in the loft. Has he got any clothing or blankets up there? Why, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Why do you ask? I want King to get his scent so he can lead me to the boys' cabin. With King leading the way, Sergeant Preston set out to trail the boy and the Indian. He had gone about two miles from town when he sighted a boy plodding toward him on foot. A little black and white dog that was trotting beside the boy ran forward to meet King. Oh, King! Oh, you husband! Oh, What's wrong, son? An outlaw named Bat Nelson just shot a friend of mine. I'm afraid he's going to die. Where is he? At a cabin about half a mile from here. You're Chris Farrell, aren't you? That's right. How did you know? I'll explain later, son. Come on, get on the sled and we'll go to the cabin. All right. All right. Bun King! Bun your husky! When they arrived at the cabin, they found Charlie Bear's paw unconscious from pain and loss of blood. The sergeant revived him and applied a temporary dressing to his wound. Sergeant, do you think he'll live? I think so, but he had a close call. You not take out bullet? No, it lodged too deep, Charlie. I'd better wait and let the doctor extract it. I hope you catch that bat, Nelson. You're lucky he didn't shoot you as well as Charlie. Which way to go when he left you? He was heading north. Look, Chris, why did you run away from your guardian? Oh, he said I'd have to get rid of Bucky. Besides, he's always been mean to me. Ever since Dad died. Well, if he's that kind of a person, why did your father appoint him your guardian? I can't figure it out. Dad told me just a couple of days before he died that he was going to appoint Uncle Ed as my guardian. Him tell me same thing. But he changed his mind when he made out his will, is that it? That's what Mr. Guthrie says. He was my dad's lawyer. But I don't believe him. Who witnessed the will? Charlie and Mr. Metz, the mine foreman. I wasn't there when it was signed. Charlie... Did you read the terms of the will before you signed it? No. Me can't read. Oh. In other words, if Guthrie and Metz were working in cahoots, they could have forged a new will, and no one would know the difference. Uh, that's what me think. Guthrie fire me, make me go away, because me get uh, suspicious. But why should Mr. Guthrie want to be my guardian? Because it puts him in control of the mind till you come of age. He and Metz working together are in a position to rob you of a fortune. Oh, golly. Isn't there anything I can do about it? There's plenty we can do about it if we can prove the present will is a forgery. Charlie, how did you sign the will? Make Indian pictures sign for Bear's Paw. Huh? And if you saw the will again, is there any way you could tell whether it was the same one you signed? We're not sure. Wait, maybe can tell. When we sign will, just come from cook and kitchen. Make little grease stain on paper. Grease stain, huh? Charlie, that may be all we need. If Guthrie did forge a new will, there's a good chance he didn't bother to imitate that stain. Then we can prove the will is a forgery. We can try, but you'll have to wait till I run down Bat Nelson. In the meantime, we've better get Charlie here to a doctor. Sergeant Preston took Chris and Charlie back to his own cabin in Whitehorse and summoned the doctor to treat the Indian's wound. Then he went to the Yukon Hotel, where Guthrie and Metz were registered. He knocked on the door of their room. You, Sergeant. Come in. Sorry, I can't stop. Just wanted to let you know that I've found Chris. Why, that's wonderful news, Sergeant. Where is he? Right now, he's at my cabin with his Indian friend, Charlie Bearspawn. But aren't you going to bring him here to the hotel? No, I'm not. He's going to stay at my cabin with Charlie for another hour or so until Constable Ross gets off duty at the jail. After that, the constable will take care of them until I get back. Till you get back? Where are you going? Charlie was badly wounded by an outlaw. I'm going after the man who shot him. But, uh, Sergeant, I don't understand. Why aren't you turning Chris over to me? Because I'm not sure you're his proper guardian. Why, that's ridiculous. I was appointed guardian by his father's will. You were appointed guardian by a will. Whether it was his father's will remains to be seen. With the help of Charlie Bearspaw, I think we may prove otherwise. Why, I never heard of such nonsense. Oh, well, you're hearing it now. You'll hear a lot more about it since I get back to town. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
Pampered looks that way. Well, I told you it was a mistake to call in the Mounties. If necessary, we'll have to kill the Indian to keep him from testifying. Oh, we can't get away with that. We'd swing for murder. Hey, you, uh, you heard him say the Indian was badly wounded, didn't you? It ought to be easy to make sure he doesn't recover. Yeah, but what about the kid? Well, we'll get him out of the way before we try anything. Come on, get your parka. we got to move fast before the constable gets to Preston's cabin. We've only got an hour. A short time later, Guthrie and Metz knocked on the door of Sergeant Preston's cabin. Chris Farrell opened up. Well, it's you two. What do you want? What do you suppose we want? We've come to take you home. I'm not going home. I'm staying right here. Don't you talk back to me, young man. Come on, Metz. We'll go inside while he gets his park up. Yap at me, you dirty little mongrel. Quiet, Bucky, quiet. Hey, hey, look. There's Charlie lying over there on the bunch. Never mind him. Hurry up and get your parka on, Chris. Sergeant Preston told me I could stay right here. Sergeant Preston has nothing to say about it. I'm your legal guardian. You won't be if we can prove you forged the will. Yes, if you can prove it. Until then, what I say goes. Now, don't let me have to tell you again to get your parka. Maybe you better do what him say. Yeah, but what's that Siwash is talking sense? You not talk so big when Sergeant Preston get back. You not worry, Chris. Me tell Sergeant what happened. All right. I'll go with him. Chris put on his parka and reluctantly accompanied the two men back to the Klondike Hotel. The little dog, Bucky, had tagged along behind his young master. But at the door of the hotel, Guthrie said, You're not coming in, Pooch. Go on, beat it. Or maybe a kick will help me along. No! <laughs> Bucky, I, I guess you'd better stay outside. Oh, come on, we've wasted enough time over that dog. It's already getting dark. We'll get a room for the boy and start back to the mine tomorrow morning. Guthrie and Metz escorted the boy to his room. Before leaving him alone, Guthrie said, Now then, young man, if you take my advice, you'll get yourself some sleep. We've got a long, hard trip ahead of us tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to lock you in your room, just to make sure you don't try running away again. After locking the door, the two men walked away down the hotel corridor. Now what do we do? Now we go back to Preston's cabin and take care of that Indian. We'd better be mighty quick about it or we'll have that constable walking in on us. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston was just leaving the jail after telling Constable Ross what had happened and ordering him to take care of Chris and the Indian when he went off duty. The sergeant had traveled only a short distance from the jail when he heard a little dog chasing after his sled and barking furiously. What? It's Bucky. Poking. What a wolf it is. You're supposed to be with Chris, Bucky, not following us. I wonder if something's wrong with the cabin. Come on, King. Maybe we better go back and check up. Send the team around, boy. Gee! Gee, you huskies! All right! Come, King! Come, you It was a short time later that Guthrie and Metz arrived at Sergeant Preston's cabin. The short winter day was already drawing to a close, but it was still light enough for the man on the bunk to see who was entering the cabin. What you want... We just came back for a little talk with you. We not talk to you about anything. Uh, you talk, all right, if you know what's good for you. We want to know how you think you're going to prove we forged a new will. Huh. Then you did make new will. I didn't say that. Hurry up and talk, Injun. All right, me tell you. When me sign will, make grease stain on paper. Me remember just what stain looked like. If me not find same stain on will, me prove will is fake. Holy smoke, he's right. We should have imitated that stain we fought, and you will. Yeah, I guess that was an oversight. However, Preston won't be able to prove a thing if Charlie isn't alive to testify. And we can make sure of that right now. Grab him, Max. You let go of my arm. Pretty strong, ain't you? What are you going to do with him, Joe? Smother him with his blanket while you hold him down. That's the easiest way. Besides, I leave no traces. Hey, someone's coming. Must be the constable. Maybe not. I'll get my gun out just in case. Hey, Guthrie, look! What? Sergeant Preston's voice shouted through the window. Drop that gun! Guthrie whirled to fire, but the sergeant shot first. Help! Oh. Put your hands up, Max. I'm doing it. Charlie, you all right? There was no reply from the figure on the bunk. All right, King, go on inside and stand there. Oh. King had long ago learned how to open the door of his master's cabin. The great dog raced inside and faced Metz with a menacing growl. Then, with King on guard, Sergeant Preston entered the cabin. If Charlie's dead, you'll hang for murder. Luckily, Charlie had just lost consciousness. 
The sergeant applied artificial respiration and finally succeeded in reviving him. Then, and only then, did he attend to Guthrie's wound. Preston, I thought you were going after that outlaw. How'd you happen to show up here? Bucky chased after me and warned me something was wrong. We have all our rotten breaks. If we hadn't booted that pooch away, this wouldn't have happened. Your big mistake was thinking you could break the law and get away with it. And admit them, Forge Will. I admit nothing. You don't have to. The attack on Charlie's life should be all the proof we'll need, let alone that business of the grease stain. What happened to Chris when Guthrie go to jail? Why, Chris will probably go to live with his uncle. I imagine you'll go with him if Chris has anything to say about him. Oh, <laughs> Me like that. Yes, I guess you both have cause to be happy. Now I'll get going. King and I must find Bat Nelson before we can say this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Rush to the grocers, fellas and girls. Grocers now have the new Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice packages with the thrilling new Yukon Trail cutouts. They are made especially for you listeners so you can follow these danger-packed stories of Sergeant Preston's relentless chase of Bat Nelson along the Yukon Trail. There are eight different new packages, each one clearly numbered on the front. For instance, models of Sergeant Preston's cabin, of Asa Jevons' general store, of Galloway Eating House, of Sergeant Preston's dog sled and team of huskies, the very things you're hearing about in these stories are on packages number one and two. You get 59 swell models in all. So go to your grocer, Prado. Ask for Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice, the delicious, nourishing cereals shot from guns actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting, full of bang-up nut-like flavor. So hurry, start building your model Yukon Trail right away. They're now on the big red and blue packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the original, crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. America is proud of its Boy Scouts. Yes, proud of you scouts listening in and all the two and a half million Boy Scouts throughout the nation. This week, as you scouts celebrate the 40th anniversary of your program of character building and citizenship training, as you dedicate yourselves to strength and liberty, America salutes you. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of... Flaming Valley. The Ermal Les was a crooked lumber camp foreman who was paid to arrange my debt. He tricked me into entering a closed-in valley and set fire to the trees across the entrance, knowing that the flames would race up the valley. What he didn't know was that his son had also entered the valley and that we would both be trapped by the onrushing forest fire. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. 
from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.